Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to understand how to find if a number is prime number or not using task automation. So before jumping into creating a logic, we have to first understand what logic does it follow. So any number which is divisible by just one and the number itself is basically called a prime number. So if I take the number five, which is a prime number, you'll see if I'll divide it by one, it results into zero remainder. If I divide it by two, it does not result into zero remainder. If I divide it by three, it does not result into zero remainder. If I divide it by four, it does not result. If I divide it by five, it results into zero remainder. Now this is one logic which we can use to validate if the number is prime or not. There could be other logics as well. Like in terms of dividing, you can put a square root and uh, just divide it by till that number, but we'll take this logic, but feel free to use any other logic as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'll jump into Tosca automation and I'll create a test case here. So first we'll write it as prime number. Okay. Now first thing is we want a input, right? So I will use T box set buffer and let me write check C prime or not. Okay. So I'm just checking if the number is prime or not. And this is where the input will take. For the moment we'll put 5 but we'll validate it with different numbers as well. Okay. Now whatever the number is there, I basically want it to be divided from 1 till the number whatever is provided in the input section here. Okay. So whenever we have a definite number of intervals which we want to do, we use the concept of repetition in case of Tosca. And how do we do that? We have to create a folder. So I'll right click, I'll create a folder because without folder, we cannot put the value in the repetition section. So I'll just write it as loop or feel free to write whatever you want. Okay. Now you see this repetition section here. In case it is not there, you right click column chooser and you just click on repetition. It will come here. Okay. Now this is the number of repetitions I want. And since we are storing in this buffer, I'll directly pass this buffer in case of repetition here so that whatever changes we are doing in the input value is going to be considered accordingly okay so i'm just writing curly brackets b the buffer name and i'm closing it okay now if it is five this whole set is going to run for five times okay now let's first create one buffer here buffer step and we'll understand what to do okay so first of all i want to divide it okay so I'll uh, keep the buffer name in a moment, but let's come here. Okay. So first of all, I will do one thing. I want this buffer curly brackets B, whatever the input value is there. Okay. And I want to find the remainder. That is the concept what we have discussed. So in order to find the remainder, we have to use modulus operator. In case it is not visible, let me zoom it. It is like this modulus operator. Okay. This is going to find remainder. Now I want to find remainder not only with one value, I want to find it till the number. So if it is 5, I want it to be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So for that, you can use the repetition keyword. So I'll put curly brackets R E P E T I T I O N. Okay. Now this is going to change with every iteration by 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. Now if the value of this is coming as zero and it that zero is appearing more than two times that means it is not a prime number right this is the logic what we have discussed that any number which is divisible by one or itself is a prime number so if we are getting remainders as zero more than two it is not a prime number that is the logic we are going with but first of all here you see we are performing a mathematical operation and in case of tosca it does not work directly we have to wrap it up using math operations so pretty basic i'll go to the start i'll put a curly brackets i'll put m a t h square brackets i'll close the square brackets and the curly brackets okay now we are getting the remainder here okay maybe whatever we want i can write it i can write it as r e m a i n d e r okay let me just copy this for the moment okay so i have got the remainder here and this is going to run okay now Again, I will create a, I'll create a if logic here. Okay. And in this, in the condition, I'll first validate if the number is coming as zero or not. Okay. So 
in order to evaluate something we have to we can use the inbuilt module which is called tbox evaluation so i'll search tbox evaluation tool and here i'll say uh maybe something checking if remainder is is zero or not okay and here i'll put this buffer buffer of i have copied this so i'll just paste this close this and if this is equal to zero then i want to just give a take a count of this okay so what i'll do is in the then condition i'll add a buffer okay and here maybe i can put it as count okay now i want this count to be increased whenever the remainder is zero so first of all i need to initialize this right give it some value and zero i'll give so that whenever it is coming it is automatically increasing it so for that i'll go to the first step and i'll just add this buffer here so we'll do the buffer creation and we'll assign a value zero here so i'll put count and i'll put zero here okay coming to this step i'll say curly brackets b of count which is zero right now plus one and again i since this is a mathematical operation i have to put it inside math operation so i'll put curly brackets math square brackets close square brackets close curly brackets okay now you see if it is a prime number this count will always remain to 2 but if it is not a prime number the count will go more than 2 okay so that is a very basic uh, conditional logic which we can validate so i'll just get out of the loop and i'll create a if condition here okay and inside if condition in the condition i'll add a evaluation tool which is basically going to evaluate uh, what condition i'm giving and the condition what we want to evaluate is if the count is equal to 2 okay so you can write sorry buffer of count is equal to 2 if this is the case then it is a prime number so i'll add a set buffer here don't worry i'll repeat the steps as well as to with the logic okay so i'll write it as a result here okay and i'll write it is a prime number okay and i'll add a else statement so if it is more than two then it is not a prime number so we'll use the same buffer result i'll put it here and instead of writing it's a prime number i'll write it as not a prime number okay so i'll just write it as not a prime number and certainly we'll validate this now whenever you're writing any logic like this it would be better if you rename these things to reflect exactly what you're doing uh, so in case you're running into any issue you can make use of control flow diagram as well to see what is happening okay but let me just explain this in interest of time so first of all i am taking one creating one buffer to take it as an input which is c prime or not and we will change the value here to see if it is working or not and then we are just taking one buffer and we are assigning zero to that now we have to divide the same number from one till this number so that's why we are using the repetition concept okay and i have named this as loop whatever you want you can do now in order to make it dynamic I am putting this specific value in the repetition section. So if I'm putting 5, if I'm putting 10, if I'm putting 15, whatever the number I'm putting, it is performing the number of iterations accordingly. Now in the first step, we are checking the remainder. So we are using the input value and we are dividing it by repetition. Now since we are using a repetition concept, it is going to start from 1 till that number. So 1, it will divide by 1, then it will divide by 2, then it will divide by 3 till whatever the number is there. And in the first in, in the first or in one iteration whatever the number is divided it will check if the remainder is zero and it will keep increasing this count now the moment the count is increased uh, it will keep running and if it is a prime number it the count is going to be two if it is more than a uh, if it is not a prime number it is going to be uh, not two so we are validating that condition here and we are putting the result accordingly now let's see if this actually works or not so 5 is a prime number let's run in the scratch book and see either we can see in the results or we can see in the buffer viewer as well 
but let's see if this works or not so since it went to the then condition you see result it is a prime number okay now i have already mentioned uh, in my notes here you see all these are prime numbers till 100 so we'll just randomly pick a uh, few of these and we'll go to the buffer view so we can we don't have to go to the scratch book uh, all the time so let's change the number to maybe 47 and see if it is coming as prime or not okay so i'll put 47 and i'll run this now there could be several different logics you can use to create this program uh, i have used just one simple logic so that the concept is clear however we can use other logics as well to make it more efficient so you see 47 it is a prime number okay now 48 is not a prime number so let me put and we should see the negative result if that is working fine or not so let's run this okay so this is uh, this is not a prime number okay now in case uh, you're looking for this code uh, i'll put it in a location and i'll put that in the description section so in, in case you want you can uh, download this and validate it on your end as well Thank you very much. Do like, share and subscribe and have a great day. Bye-bye.